Unit 3 is about electron configuration and periodicity, or the proper, uh, repeating properties that are found on the periodic table. So the old model of the atom is the planetary model, where we have our protons and neutrons in the nucleus and our electrons circling outside. A uh, guy by the name of Bohr did some research with the planetary model. Um, he only really looked at hydrogen because hydrogen is number one on the periodic table, so it has one proton and one neutron, so it was easier to explain. What he said was that the electrons were only allowed on these paths, and he called these paths orbits. He also said that the electron was quantized on these orbits. In other words, the electron has fixed energies. So when the electron is on the first energy level, it has a certain amount of energy. When it moves to the second energy level, it would have more energy. Now, the little formula 2n squared is not given to you in your reference table, so you will need to remember 2n squared. That tells us the number of electrons allowed on the orbit. So if we were on the first orbit, or the first energy level, n would equal 1. Well, 1 squared is 2 times I'm sorry, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. So the first energy level can hold 2 electrons. Now if we go to the second energy level, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. So the second energy level can hold a total of 8 electrons. On the third energy level, 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. It can hold 18 electrons, and we can continue this. If we look at this isotope, 4HE, <clears throat> we know that helium is number 2 on the periodic table, so we could write the 2 there and it would be 4,2HE. Because it's helium and the atomic number is 2, it has 2 protons. For neutrons, we would take the mass number minus the protons, and so we have 2 neutrons. Because this is a neutral atom, we also have 2 electrons. So if we look at our Bohr model here, <clears throat> we would put two protons in the nucleus. Now, protons are positive, so we're going to symbolize them with a plus sign. Neutrons are neutral, so we're going to use a zero. They're also found in the nucleus, so we would put two neutrons. There are two electrons. Well, the first energy level can hold two electrons. So if we put our two electrons there, we don't need any more energy levels and that would be the Bohr model for 4HE. If we look at 23Na, sodium is number 11 on the periodic table, so it has 11 protons. 23 minus 11 gives us 12 neutrons, and since it's neutral, it would also have 11 electrons. So we would put 11 protons in the nucleus, and then we would put 12 neutrons so we put 12 neutrons in the nucleus. Now we need to do our electrons. On the first energy level we can hold two electrons, but I need a total of 11. So I've already taken care of two, that means I have nine more electrons. The second energy level can hold up to eight electrons. So we've placed eight electrons on the second energy level. But that only gives me a total of ten, and I want eleven electrons. So my last electron has to end up on the third energy level. If we look at carbon-12, <clears throat> carbon is number 6 on the periodic table, so it has 6 protons. For neutrons, we would say 12 minus 6 gives us 6 neutrons. And for electrons, since it's neutral, would also be 6. So we would put 6 protons in the nucleus, 6 neutrons in the nucleus, Now we have six electrons. Two electrons can go on the first energy level, 
up to eight can go on the second energy level, but I only need six electrons. So I only need to put four on the second energy level. Now if we look at a picture of Bohr's model here, all we're given is electrons. If we count up our electrons, one, two on the first energy level, three, four, five, six, seven electrons total, that means this has to be nitrogen. Here if we look at our electrons, we have one, two on the second or first energy level, we have eight on the second for a total of ten, and then we have eleven, twelve, thirteen electrons total. So this has to be aluminum. Bohr's model. The ground state is the lowest energy. An excited state is simply higher energy. So our electron starts off on the ground state. If we give it, and it has a certain amount of energy, if we add more energy to that electron, it will get excited and jump up to a higher energy level. So when you add energy, the electron becomes excited and goes up. Once it's excited, eventually it's going to crash back down. <clears throat> so it's going to release energy. And when it releases energy, it falls to the ground state or lower energy. When it falls, it emits a photon. Now the word emit means to release and the word photon refers to energy. So when the electron falls, it releases energy. The energy can be in several different forms. It can be in visible light, it could be in microwaves, it could be in infrared, it could be in ultraviolet, it could be gamma rays. It's just a form of energy. So when you turn on a neon sign, the electricity is exciting our electron, and then when a, the electron falls, it gives off that neon colored light. What Bohr's model does not do for us is that it does not explain how the electrons occupy space. We know now that electrons do not circle the nucleus. Instead, they're contained in 3D regions. Bohr's model doesn't explain that. Bohr's model doesn't explain all the properties of all the elements either. Remember, it's only good for showing us the property of electrons releasing energy, and it's really only good for the hydrogen element. The last thing that it does not explain is why electrons, which are negative, why they don't fall into the positive nucleus. Remember, opposites are supposed to attract, so why doesn't my negative attract my positive? If you really want to know the answer to number three there, you would have to take physics. Now the electromagnetic radiation, or the electromagnetic spectrum, EM, electromagnetic, is given to you in your reference table. It's important for us to know because it explains how photons and electrons act like particles and waves. So this is the wave particle duality. The electron can act like a wave because it has wavelengths and frequency and gives off energy, but it also acts like a particle because it has mass and takes up space. Wavelength is the distance between two points on a wave. So if we look at a wave, the wavelength could be the distance from crest to crest or trough to trough. Because it's a measurement of length, we use meters. Now our Bohr's model in our reference table actually measures it in nanometers because it's really small measurements. <clears throat> so how do you convert from meters to, or I'm sorry, from nanometers to meters? You just have to tack on times 10 to the negative 9. So if your Bohr's model says that the wavelength is 1875 nanometers, then you would take your calculator and type in 1875 special button negative 9. And that would give you 1.875 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. So again, all you're doing is tacking on the times 10 to the negative 9. 
Now frequency is measured in hertz. It's an inverse second. How many waves pass during a second? Wavelength and frequency are inversely related. So the longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. You have to know the relationship. We're not going to do this mathematically, so you have to at least remember the relationship. Low frequency, long wavelength, L and L. Energy and frequency are directly related. Again, we're not doing math, but we need to know the relationship. So if we have low frequency, we also have low energy. So if you can remember, all your L's go together. High frequency, short wavelength, high frequency, high energy. Okay, so atoms can gain energy, and we can gain energy by electricity or by fire, heating it up. The potential energy then increases. Our electrons are able to jump up to a higher energy level. When the electron falls, it emits that photon of light, and we can take that light and go to our electromagnetic radiation spectrum and figure out the color. Each element gives off its own spectrum, its own set of colors. The line emission spectrum is what you call that pattern of colors that are released by the atom as the electron gets excited and then falls back down to the ground state.